Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Ethiopia is pleased to join the Alliance for Multilateralism. We express our appreciation to France and Germany for taking this important initiative at a time when multilateralism is under siege. Paradoxically, this is also the time when multilateralism is needed the most to effectively respond to the unprecedented challenges and threats that we are collectively face as a community of nations. That is why we believe this alliance is so critical to contribute to healing broken trust in multilateral institutions and building a more effective and inclusive multilateral system. I wish to take this opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to play a meaningful and active role to help ensure the United Nations become more effective and secure greater legitimacy. Ethiopia is indeed proud to be one of the founding members of the United Nations. Although it could not count much in its hour of need on the support of the League of Nations, Ethiopia never lost confidence in multilateralism and remained a staunch supporter of the principle of collective security embedded in the UN Charter. This commitment remains unwavering today. It is based on this conviction that Ethiopia has been making a meaningful and constructive contribution within the framework of the United Nations, not only on issues of peace and security, but other issues of global interest and concerns such as climate change, poverty reduction, and sustainable development. Excellencies, it has never been more evident than today that the peace and the prosperity of the entire peoples of the world is closely intertwined. It is only by addressing issues of common interest and concern collectively through the multilateral approach that we can make tangible progress towards achieving the ambitious transformational agendas that we have set for ourselves. The concern at the moment is that we are not only lagging behind in fulfilling the promises made five years ago within the framework of SDGs and the Paris Climate Accord, but we are, in fact, off track. Therefore, accelerating action over the coming decade to save humanity and the planet is not an option. All the more so, as we enter the decade of action this year, we, on our part, are fully committed to fast-tracking the implementation of the SDGs as an integral part of our development endeavors and building a climate-resilient economy. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations is undoubtedly the most indispensable universal organization. While the UN's track record is not unblemished, as the Independent Commission on Multilateralism rights put it, even it is harshest, critics would have to admit that without it, the world would be a more dangerous place. The convening power of the United Nations is in mobilizing global action will be extremely vital as we strive to recover and rebuild better in the post-COVID period. This said, the need to revitalize the organization has never been more urgent and critical. That is why we should seize this historic opportunity to push for reform of the organization so that it could deliver better for we the people. But we should also be mindful that the United Nations can only be more effective and stronger as much as its member states want it to be. As Imperial Haile Selassie, who addressed the United Nations General Assembly in October 1963, said, and I quote, the charter of the United Nations expresses the noblest aspiration of man, 
but these two as we are the phrases of the covenant of the League of Nations are only words. Their value depends wholly on our will to observe and honor them and give them content and meaning. Therefore, let me conclude by reaffirming phase in multilateralism and the principles and purposes of the United Nations Charter, which remains our guiding post as we grapple with the challenges of our time. I thank you.